Welcome to the drawing board. Today we're going to talk about drawing clouds. Clouds should be pretty simple, right? Something we all have done in school. What we're going to do today is transform the basic clouds that we are used to drawing in school and try to make it a little bit more realistic. And what we're used to drawing in school is basically these poofy little things, right? That's the typical type of clouds that we've drawn in school. And, you know, that's okay, but we're going to try to uh, make it look a little bit more realistic by talking about three things today. We're going to talk about the types of clouds, we're going to talk about cloud placement, and we're going to talk about lighting. So first off, uh, we're going to talk about the types of clouds. And we're going to focus on three types. Uh, the ones that you're used to seeing. That's called cumulus. The problem with the way we've drawn cumulus is that what we're doing is we're basically drawing little puffs around an oval. That's what we've traditionally been doing. And the way I want you to think about drawing cumulus is I'm going to draw a horizontal line and then I'm going to draw varying size circles and it's good to kind of alternate big and small and big and small and you could even stack them up and then what we're going to do is we're going to outline that to give it more of an organic feel. And we could erase some of the and I'll draw another one. Again, just alternating big and small. And I'll explain a little later why we want a flat line at the bottom there. Yeah, that'll give us a slightly more organic looking clouds. The second type of clouds I want to talk about is called stratus. And this is more like a layer cloud. And the way I do this is I have a relatively flat line at the bottom. You might want to give it a little bit of curvature. And then towards the top line, we could give it a little bit more shape. You could even think of it as though you're doing little bubbles again at the top here. The third type of class I want to talk about is cirrus and they are kind of more like wispy clouds so I like to draw a bunch of lines that they kind of follow like the airflow and I try to stay on one side of this line here that I've drawn now this is not the only type of clouds there are. There are, there's overlap, but I think based on these three basic type of clouds, we could build on that. So, you know, between stratus and, and cumulus, you could have ones that look kind of like a mix between the two. So here I could draw, again, the line and the bubbles. But at the same time, I'm going to let that bottom line run a little bit smoother. I 
have that come across. So that it seems like it has that movement of the stratus. And you know, you could build on that. After a while, you don't even need to draw all the bubbles. But yeah, you could build on that. And then you, you could have series that also look like cumulus. Again, I'm gonna draw these little wispy lines that it follow. And then we're just gonna draw little bubbly clouds along here. You may have seen this before. And I'm drawing these kind of according to where they are in elevation. So the Sirius would be higher up in the sky. Cumulus would be lower. Be the kind of clouds that you probably look when you're cloud watching, seeing what it looks like. Yeah, so here are the three types of clouds. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is the placement of the clouds. Um, let's go back to our drawing of these clouds. When you see clouds like this, what you think of is basically the clouds are going side to side, right? And they're kind of flat. They're kind of uh, perpendicular to the direction that we're looking at. If you're looking this way, you know, the clouds is almost perpendicular. But the way we look at clouds, we're usually looking up at the sky and the clouds is a layers floating this way. So instead of looking at clouds moving like this side to side, we should really be thinking about it like this. So to illustrate that, so if I was a person watching clouds, so instead of looking at a perpendicular layer like this, we should really be thinking about us looking at the cloud as layers like this. So what that translates to, if this is our canvas, we would be looking at a plane kind of like this. And what that means is the clouds that are here at the top are going to look much bigger and spaced a little further apart. And as we gradually get to the back, the layers get closer together and it converges because all of this is converging to a point somewhere in the distance. The other thing I want you to think about too is the direction in which the clouds are moving. So we have to, our clouds are moving side to side. You know, you could draw like a 3D box that's kind of longer lengthwise and you could put a cloud in that box and that will create the clouds that are moving side to side. And remember when I talked about, when I talked about the shape of the clouds earlier, how it has a flat bottom. That's, that's basically the bottom of this layer here. And we'll shade that a little bit to kind of illustrate. We'll go into shading a little bit more in detail later. But yeah, this would be the look of a cloud that's moving side to side. Whereas a cloud that's moving towards you, clouds that are moving towards and away from you would be much more dramatic, right? I'm drawing a 3D box that that's going that's going this way, as opposed to this one that's going this way, and I could fill that box with a cloud. In this case, you can see that the sh the shadow would converge as it disappears into the distance. Now, if you want that really dramatic cloud, um, a lot of times when you see like landscape photos, they're taken with a fairly wide lens. And what that does is it introduces a little bit of distortion to your point of view. It's least noticeable when the horizon line is right in the center and the distortion will start to bow out. If you're looking down at like a bird's eye view, what you see is it starts to distort. And I'm exaggerating quite a bit. 
but you see it distorts. Now, if you're looking at it from a low angle, or what we sometimes refer to as a worm's eye view, there's a little tapeworm, you notice that the horizon line starts to bow down like this. This is when the horizon line is below the center of your frame. You, notice, you start to notice that it distorts like this. Again, these are ways to make your clouds look more dramatic, give it that slightly larger than life look. So yeah, that's the things to think about when you are placing your clouds. You want to think about the direction in which it is going, whether it's across from you or going towards or away from you. Going across from you is generally a little bit more peaceful, you know, more like you're just watching the time pass. When you see clouds moving towards and away from you, it's almost like a storm is coming. It's dramatic. Uh, also, you want know, to think about the perspective. You know, do you want to draw it where the horizon line is right at the center? Or do you want to draw it where you're kind of looking down on the image? In which case, it will kind of bow out a little bit this way. Or if you want to draw it like this, horizon line sometimes you know, your clouds will start to warp around it this way. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about is lighting when it comes to drawing clouds. So let's draw our little guy again. He is here cloud watching and we see a little cloud right here. You want to think about, you know, whether it's a bright blue day with the sun high up in the sky or if it's late in the day and the sun is starting to set, or if it just so happens to be that the sun is obstructed by the cloud. And that's gonna give you a very, very different look in terms of the clouds and how you shade it. So I kind of alluded to that a little bit from the previous one. When you have the sun above the cloud, you know, you could just think of the cloud as in a 3D box. Obviously, the bottom part is going to be a bit darker. And depending on which way the light is coming from, you could decide which side of the cloud is going to be slightly shaded. And keep in mind that these little bubbles, they're round, right? So it's kind of shaped like this. And obviously, the further away from it it is, the more shade there is. But you could give it a little bit of shade right there. Now, if you have a setting sun, it's going to be pretty much the opposite. We'll just draw the same cloud in the sky. I'm going to forego the 3D box. I'm just going to kind of give it some shape here. And as it's setting, you know, all your shadows would be on the top. And also, the, the colors you might want to think about, right? I'm just doing this in black and white. But obviously, with the setting sun, you probably won't get the blue sky. You'll probably get purple, red, orangey glow. Um, so you want color to reflect that. Now, with the sun directly behind the cloud, that creates a pretty interesting dramatic effect. So here's the sun right here behind the cloud. What you'll get is most of the cloud will be slightly darker, but right around the outer edge, you get a little bit of rim light. And you might also get a little bit of light shining through. I call this the gospel album cover lighting. And that creates a really dramatic effect as well. So that's another thing that you might want to try doing when you're thinking about how you want to place your clouds in relation to the sun and where the light is coming from.